I ended up doing spinal cord injury and and the nervous system, development of the nervous system, really actually because that had been a project I'd done as an undergraduate in Oxford, um, which I thought was the most interesting thing that I had ever encountered in science. Well, I was on the scientific committee for a long time and then eventually I became the chairman. And this was also at the period when we'd first seen really regeneration in the spinal cord. This was in the 90s. Um, end of the 80s, early 90s. Um, and so there was a lot of excitement that things were starting to open up. We actually had some real science. We could actually see real regeneration. We were starting to understand why it was difficult to do and what the possibilities were, what the science was. And uh, it was a great period, actually. Well, I think um, we that, that was the time when we discovered anti-no-go, no-go and anti-no-go. That was Martin Schwab in Zurich. So that really was the first regeneration treatment. There was a lot of excitement around the time at transplanting um, olfactory glial cells um, because that had made some progress and, and shown some regeneration and some functional recovery. And that it, it, a little bit later, there was even a few patients transplanted and a few more that will be transplanted in the future in Poland. Um, and one of those patients certainly seemed to have shown some some excellent recovery. Um, <clears throat> there was um, we we started working on plasticity and the extracellular matrix, and some molecules called chondroitin sulfate proteoglycans, which inhibit plasticity and inhibit regeneration. I think we were starting to understand how to why axons won't regenerate and and, and things that we had to do to make them regenerate. But I think we were also starting to understand how hard this was going to be. Because firstly, um, you know, we, we understood then that we weren't just trying to recapitulate development, that regeneration is fundamentally different. But I think the other thing that was starting to appear, um, which has really been a, a, a serious issue, is that we as mammals have evolved to prevent repair and regeneration, to turn off regeneration and plasticity. Um, and we've done that for a number of reasons, uh, but we've done it so effectively and in so many different ways that it means that our job effectively is trying to reverse evolution, and reverse all these, all these switches that have been thrown to turn off regeneration and turn off plasticity in our nervous system. And unfortunately, when biology tries to do something, it doesn't tend to just do it with one one molecule or one switch. It tends to sort of throw things at it and, and have several different solutions working in parallel, which is what we've been finding. I think the idea of a, a single magic bullet disappeared a long time ago. Well, first of all, there have been the treatments that um, improve axon regeneration. So antinogo was the first of those. Uh, chondroitinase also has a modest, a similar sort of effect, actually. To, um, but and they both also have effects on plasticity. Those two treatments. Mm -hmm. um, we've now got uh, RGM, um, RGM alpha that's in clinical trials. Um, we don't that, that don't know how that well that's going, but at least it's it's a, a good candidate that's in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. um, We've now, I think, understood that um, regeneration is prevented not just by inhibitory molecules in the environment, but by intrinsic changes in the neurons themselves that happens as the neurons mature. Okay. And we're starting to see treatments now that, um, that address that. The other area that's been exciting has been the whole area of plasticity. You know, it's very hard to repair the spinal cord completely but allowing the spinal cord to rewire a bit so it can compensate um, for the loss of function through plasticity is actually an easier and softer therapeutic target. Uh, and there's been a number of ways of doing that that address it. Um, then finally, well, two other things, there's been stimulation. So one of the decisions we made in ISRT a while back was to focus on bowel, bladder and sex. And I think that was a good decision, you know, I think those, those are things that that the community really feels strongly about and which have been under-researched. Um, um, and then there's also stem cell transplantation, which I think is going to be important too.
And, and there's another paper which I think actually is going to lead to a, a treatment which is showing that we can get sensory fibers to regenerate in the spinal cord. That uses a, a molecule called integrins. So, you know, there's been all this focus in spinal cord injury on motor for obvious reasons. But motor fibers, particularly the ones from the brain to the spinal cord, the corticospinal tract, are really, really hard to get to regenerate. Sensory fibers are much intrinsically much better regenerators. Uh, so we've managed to get sensory fibers to regenerate the whole way up the rat's spinal cord, bringing back very good sensation. And, and so, you know, you can imagine, I, I talk to patients occasionally and I say, look, I think we could bring back some sensation, and, um, for, but not to your whole body because you have to inject dorsal ganglia. Which bit of sensation would you like? So obviously, you know, hand fingers is important. Even though you can't move your fingers very well, you'd quite like some sensation there, wouldn't you? But obviously sex would be great, yeah. And so we do have a program at the moment in Prague, where I work also, uh, trying to use this treatment to bring back um, genital sensation in rats. I think the main frustration at the moment is, is clinical trials, to be quite honest. I think there are several treatments that will make patients somewhat better, not completely recovered, but somewhat better, that need to go through clinical trials and aren't going through clinical trials. The reason mainly, you know, um, financial is a major problem. Science is going quite well. It's not going nearly as fast as we would like it to be going. We're definitely making some, some tremendous progress and it is producing candidates. Well, for the SCI community, I mean, I think it's been a, a tough um, ride in the sense that the science has turned out to be really difficult. You know, like I said, we've been trying to reverse evolution and evolution has has, has hit us in not just one way, but several ways. Um, and so it's been a struggle. So as a scientist, it's been exciting. As a, as a spinal injury patient, it's been frustrating because we haven't made as much progress as rapid a progress as, as we would like. Uh, but nevertheless, I think the message is that the science is actually moving ahead um, very excitingly. And, you know, watch this page. Uh, the other message to the community, I think, is that science has produced treatments. Um, we've produced antinogo, we've produced chondrogenase, we've produced stimulation, we've produced uh, RGC. Um, you know, there are several things out there. Uh, the frustration for us as scientists and for them as, as patients and carers is how hard it's been and will be to get these patients, these treatments to go through clinical trials. Uh, and part of, part of this will be political. You know, um, if, you, if you put enough influence uh, politically, um, then there'll be some motivation. Well, I'm now emeritus at Cambridge, you know, I'm so, I'm 71 years old and uh, uh, they don't want you to stay on forever. So I'm working, I, I, I intend to work till I'm about 75. So I've got another four years of, of work. Um, I'm working still in Cambridge as a volunteer researcher. And I'm also working in, in Prague at the Institute of Experimental Medicine there, where we're doing spinal injury research and that's going rather well. And I'm also a visiting professor now at Imperial College uh, with Simone Di Giovanni. So I'll be keeping involved, but but um, and, and my focus will be on axon regeneration primarily. No, Andy, whether I whether I'll when I hit seventy five think this is still a lot of fun and I want to go on doing it, or doing well and you know, uh, or think well, okay, it's time to leave it to to other people. But I have a lot of a lot of interests and hobbies. Still, the, the, the most exciting and the most rewarding thing I've ever done is researching into repairing the nervous system.